Mabuhai, Kamustika, welcome. How are you? This is Bob from Love Beyond the Sea. This is going to be a, a lengthy one, as you can tell by looking at the time there, but there's um, a lot of meat on the bones in this one. I'm going to talk today about sex and marriage. Go ahead and feel free to find another upload to watch if sex talk makes you uncomfortable, but it really shouldn't. Today, people need to talk about it. If you want, you're welcome to listen to what I have to say and leave a comment here. There's uh, quite a bit to chew on in this article. I will link for you called Sex Free Marriage Anyone? Welcome to the new trend for the Wokies, marrying your best friend. What could go wrong with this? And why would any rational thinking person think sex-free marriage is a good idea? Here on Love Beyond the Sea, I am all for marriage, and I believe it is a necessity for most people by far. We need sex for procreation and companionship, and there's just something about it to make you feel like a man. A man needs a helper, too. In what way? Any way he needs it. Raising a family is a big one. Avoiding sexual sin is another. Not being lonely is certainly a part of it. I will be adding this video to the playlist called the Controversial Collection because there's going to be a lot of such uh, statements here. The Bible says it's not good that the man Adam should be alone. That's Genesis 2.18. There God said he would make a helper fit for him. And in previous videos I have explained how that means someone opposite of him, yet like him. Wife means a woman. It always means... Um, woman, singular, um, one man, one woman. God determines the terms, so that's why I started there in the Bible. I don't think I can go wrong. Same-sex marriage would be excluded. Before I comment on this video, um, I just want to mention that um, recently I have made four videos that explains what marriage is, where it comes from, who decides what marriage is, and how serious it is. And viewer, this is a big deal, or I wouldn't be taking the time to make videos like this. Marriage is becoming out of vogue, yet I believe we should be preparing ourselves and being prepared for it by our parents, ideally, to be ready to marry as soon as legally possible. Now, these videos and other links will be in the description box, and I'll try to remember to put them right up at the top. So, the article mentioned it is important to marry your best friend and I am all for marrying your best friend I have no problem with that in fact I consider my Filipino wife to be my best friend and it isn't even close we are a team too while I as her husband have biblical authority over her that is a good thing for her when properly understood I am her servant leader not her despot not her ruler the better I do that, the easier it is for her to want to submit to me. And I will only want what is best for her, my best friend. That whole concept isn't as devious and suppressive as feminists think. Marry your best friend. My wife wasn't my best friend when we got married so quickly. Back in 2015, we started our spousal visa paperwork before I had even met her in person. I never considered how good of a friend she was to me at that time. You know, we got married in 54 days. I was focusing on investing myself into our marriage back then. If I did well with that, we would both be each other's best friends one day. Another comment, other than, you know, marrying your best friend from this article was this. Marriage is not about two people who are romantically involved with each other. Not anymore. A new trend of platonic marriages is emerging, and there's absolutely no need to get hot and sticky beneath the bed sheets ever. Well, I think not being romantically involved with each other is just plain weird, don't you? That just isn't normal. I like normal. Normal is good. I assume romantically here they're primarily referring to sexual relations. I want to look at the word involved romantically. Involved. People's sex drives are not the same, but there needs to be involvement when you are married. I can't believe we're even thinking about stuff that, like that. I believe that even in an age gap relationship, sexual or romantic involvement is required. If the older husband cannot fulfill his responsibility to his younger wife sexually, then I would question why they got married, especially from her side. 
of things. That is because I believe sexual or romantic involvement is an essential part of being married. It is not fair for the woman to not be satisfied. It doesn't take much for a man to be satisfied, but this, you know, his little woman has needs too. Hebrews 13, 4 says, Marriage should be honored by all and the marriage bed kept pure, for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Now from a place called padfield.com, it says sex is not a dirty word. In Hebrews 13, 4, there we read, marriage is honorable among all in the bed undefiled. The word for bed there is this verse in the Greek word um, koiti, from which we get our English word coitus, or sexual intercourse. All that is done for the mutual pleasure of husbands and wives on the marital bed is honorable. It's, it's okay. What was a thou shalt not during the courtship is now a thou shalt in marriage. And, of course, I'm not referring to, you know, a woman being, you know, beaten or forced to do anything uh, that she is uncomfortable with. That's not what that idea conveys. It's just that sex outside of marriage, wrong, bad, harmful, and uh, destructive uh, sex in marriage. You know, do, do whatever you two want to do. Do as much as you want to do it. That's nobody's business. That's, that's the way God wants it. That is one great reward for being married. Even in her old age, Sarah desired to be with her husband, Abraham. Now, when she was told she was going to bear a child, she said, this is Genesis 24, verse 5, After I have grown old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? The American home is in trouble today. The statistics are rather depressing. 26% of all American babies are born to unwed mothers. There are 1.5 million abortions performed in this country every year. You, know, you see, there are problems when uh, sex is had outside of marriage, and certainly it should be had in marriage. 81% of all abortions are the end result of fornication, that's sexual sin. 18% they say are because of convenience, social, social or economic reasons, and less than 1% are due to rape, incest, health problems, of the mother or fetal handicap. More stats, nearly half of America's 2.4 million marriages uh, at the time this article was written um, involved remarriage of at least one of the partners, up from 31% in 1970 to 46% in 1990, according to National Center of Health Statistics. The center also found that 64% of diver divorced women remarry, 25% of women who divorce and remarry divorce the second time. 60% of all men, 40% of all women have been unfaithful to their spouse, they say. And marriage failures due to sexual problems could be as high as 75 to 80%. So, you know, we, we should talk about sex. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. For every divorce, there are you know dozens of unhappy marriages held together by children, business or economic needs. If you are a Christian, you must be concerned about the deterioration of the family in our country. Here on Love Beyond the Sea, a channel for mature, marriage-minded men, I want to do my small part to help men get married. I have had personal discussions with people, usually younger guys, which is very gratifying for me because these young guys are growing up with unprecedented confusion about basic things like marriage and commitment. It is okay to question where ideas come from, and what I say here is from the Bible. I support what I say by the Word of God. What else is there? Human wisdom? I don't think so. Not for me. Now, from GodAnswers.org, a marriage bed can be defiled in several ways. Fornication. These are, um, these are uh, sexual things that are uh, uh, damaging to people. Later on, I'll talk about more sexual marital aberrations, but fornication is one way a marriage bed can be defiled. That's when two people are unmarried and they engage in sexual intercourse. They are defiling God's good gift of sex. It should be in marriage. Those who have not vowed themselves to each other in a binding lifetime union have no right to exploit the culmination of such a vow. Sex was designed to be the final act of consecration when a couple pledge their lives to each other in a sacred covenant, all forms of sexual out, 
of sexuality outside a marriage union are bringing dishonor to the honorable institution of marriage. And um, that's 1 Corinthians 6, 18. Adultery is another way when one or both parties in a sexual union are married to someone else, God calls their sexual acts adultery. In fact, adultery was punishable by death under God's old covenant with Israel. Even though we no longer live under that covenant, covenant, they say adultery is still high on God's list of moral evils and is always named as a sin that keeps unrepentant offenders from inheriting the kingdom of God. That's very serious. That's Galatians 5, 19 and 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Then there is homosexuality. Another defilement of the marriage bed is the perversion of men having sex with men or women with women. Despite our world's current embrace of homosexual practice, this vile act has never been and never will be sanctioned or blessed by God. Homosexuality is the distortion of God's gift of physical unity between husband and wife and is the only sexual activity labeled as an abomination, Leviticus 20.13. The prohibition against homosexuality carries right into the New Covenant as it is listed with those sins that keep the unrepentant out of the kingdom of God. 1 First Corinthians 6, 9, 1 Timothy 1, 9 and 10, Jude 1, verse 7. So that's a, another distortion. Lots of distortions in this world concerning sex and marriage. For prostitution, Proverbs 7 gives a detailed look at the destruction that comes upon a young man who allows himself to be seduced by a harlot. The sin of harlotry is often used as a metaphor for unfaithful Israel. Christians are warned to avoid such immorality because of the sacredness of the marriage bed, where you are supposed to have sex. And then there's pornography, another crippling distortion. Using pornography for sexual gratification is a more modern way to defile the marriage bed. Pornographic books, videos, sexting, and the use of other sexually explicit materials also defile the sanctity of the sexual union between a man and a wife. Pornography has the effect of bringing strangers into the bedroom, even if only through the eyes. Jesus warned that lust associated with looking at a woman is equivalent to adultery before God, Matthew 5, 28. Pornography has elevated sexual lust to an art form, but is still corrupting to the heart and a sinful defiling of the sexual act. God created human beings to be pure in body and spirit. Sexual union between a husband and wife was a part of that purity, Genesis 2, 24 and 25. When Adam and Eve sinned, sexuality was tainted along with everything else that I'll talk about in this video. Jesus purchased the power to reclaim that purity through his sacrificial death on the cross, 2 Corinthians 5:21. No sin, including sexual immorality, is too great for the power of that atoning death and resurrection to pardon. Even though we may have defiled the marriage bed in many ways, God can restore sexual purity and holiness when we repent and commit our lives to following him. Uh, reference there, Psalm 51, 7 and 1 John 1, 7. Here's more on the necessity. For married couples to have sex. I can't believe, again, we even need to talk about this, but you know, this is 2021. 1 Corinthians 7 says, Now, for the matters you wrote about, and we don't know what they wrote about, but the best we can do is kind of tell from the uh, answers from the Apostle Paul, it is good for a man not to have sexual relations with a woman. But, since sexual immorality is occurring, each Man should have sexual relations, relations with his own wife and each woman with her own husband. The husband should fulfill his marital duty to his wife. Should fulfill his marital duty to his wife and likewise the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her body, her own body, but yields it to her husband. In the same way, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but yields it to his wife. Do not deprive each other, except perhaps by mutual consent and for a time, that would be a short time, so that you may devote yourselves, both of them, to prayer. You see, this is me, just sex is a normal, ongoing part of a marriage. 
then come together again so that Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. More from Proverbs 5. Drink water from your own cistern, running water from your own well. Should your springs overflow in the streets, your streams of water in the public squares, let them be yours alone, never to be shared with strangers. May your fountain be blessed, and may you rejoice in the wife of your youth, a loving doe, a graceful deer. May her breasts satisfy you always, and may you ever be intoxicated with her love. That's love making here. That's the context. Drunk with it. That's what you should be if you're married. Why, my son, be intoxicated with another man's wife? Why embrace the bosom of a wayward woman? For your ways are in full view of the Lord, and he examines all your paths. The evil deeds of the wicked ensnare them. The cords of their sins hold them fast. For lack of discipline, they will die led astray by their own great folly. I think that describes what, what happens to people who try to invent these um, marital distortions and aberrations. They just are going to fail and be very destructive. I should, or it should be clear here by now, I hope, that if you are married, then you are responsible to provide sex to your spouse, and they are responsible to provide it to you. The more kind and supportive you are, the more sex you are likely to get. And what about the quote, not anymore, when the article talked about marriage not being for two people who are romantically involved with each other? Well, again, says who? As I have shown, the Bible doesn't say married people can say no to each other. Obviously, there are times of sickness and women have, you know, periods, but, you know, saying no needs to have a very good reason. And the reason for that is, in marriage, sex is for the other person. Let me say that again. Sex is for the other person, according to the Bible. Now, they also made this comment here. It says, call me a cynic, but don't most marriages end up sexless anyway? Passion fades, adoration warps into irritation, and just give it seven years or so, a trip to a divorced lawyer is pretty much inevitable. Well, the author has a rather depressing view of marriage, almost like they're trying to defend the nonsensical idea of uh, platonic or sexless marriage. But you know what? Eventually, if we stay married and live long enough, neither person will desire it much compared to when they were younger. Another reason to get married as fast as you can. But I get the impression the author is assuming that even before those days come, Couples will be so combative that neither will even desire sex with the other. They'll just get tired of each other. Maybe they're thinking about what happens after childbirth and children to be responsible for. It's a little like saying that since we're all going to die anyway, why not end our lives now? Since we're all going to gain weight, why not eat all we want now? If we're all going to have to stop working at our job someday, why not just avoid working from now on? I waited and looked for a wife for an unseemly long time, and, and I, I didn't give up. But, you know, it paid off. Now I'm happy and married. It's even more rewarding than I thought it would be. Some of you young men, I think, are in danger of waiting until you are an older man to get married. And I think deep down inside, you will always wish you had gotten married sooner, especially if you didn't. There are other countries out there with women who will definitely marry you. I don't think it's that tough. If you broaden your search, go where you're wanted. If you're on Love Beyond the Sea, I can help show you how to stay and enjoy being married because there's just, you know, a lot to know and a lot of proper mindset to have, and that's what a lot of my videos are focusing on. Another comment they made here, everlasting and sexually supercharged romantic love is a myth, a myth that only exists for Disney princesses. Well, of course, no one is supercharged romantically for the duration of their life or functionality. Wouldn't that be great? Why not get the getting while the getting is good? That's one of the benefits of marriage. Why even bring up that everlasting and sexually supercharged romantic love is a myth? Yes, it is. Eventually, everything in the physical realm for all of us is in decline. 
supercharged romantic love is a myth in general, but the younger you are, the more supercharged it may be. Isn't that a sensible time to get married? Ah, you say. I thought I had a phone call. What do 18-year-olds or 17-year-olds know about love and responsibility? Probably not much, but they can be taught that, and they can pick that up in marriage, valid marriage. If all of us wait until we knew everything and were so-called perfectly prepared for something, we would probably run out of time. I hadn't experienced a relationship in forever. I married my wife in less than eight weeks, committed before even meeting her in person. We had been married for six years. I knew some things, but still I had to have a place to put to use what I learned about marriage, which was marriage. Another comment from that article. So, why not start out where you and your spouse are sure to end up anyway, in separate beds, sexless from the get-go? There's no need to waste all that noisy energy. The sheets will be cleaner, too. The author has to be sarcastic here, at least I hope so, but you never can tell. Biblically, you are to avoid all sex outside of marriage. Can't handle that? Great, then get married and choose wisely, but get married. When married, don't withhold sex from your spouse. They are supposed to have waited for it with you, so continuing to be denied sex is ridiculous and wrong and very destructive. Going against God's word always is. Why not stay in shape or get in shape? Eat well. Do whatever you need to do in order to stretch your love life out as long as possible. It is surely worth it. I want to push that inevitable day as far away as possible. This view, this sounds like a fatalistic view in this article. Platonic marriage may sound foolish because it is. People today are marrying to not have sex. Talk about dumbing something down. Another comment. You can also have sex with anyone, uh, sex with whoever the hell you like, whenever the hell you feel like it. Anyone, that is, except your chosen spouse. That's not allowed. This is what you get when people try to define what marriage is and what its roles are, something that will end in disaster. The word spouse doesn't even fit here, as that is not how you treat a spouse. This is just insanity. It sounds like something you'd find in the Satanic Bible to me. Here's something to think about when it comes to having sex with someone that is not your spouse. 1 Corinthians 6, 9. For do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals. Job 24, 15. Now, by the way, um, before people accuse me of being judgmental, I am simply reciting what the Bible says. Since we sinned, Adam and Eve sinned, and we all are born that way, you know, our lives are almost like living distortions of what they should be. We have problems. We have, we have issues. We are... We are damaged, and we do wrong things. Um, but the Bible just is a mirror that points that out. Um, God himself doesn't have any political correctness. He could care less what anyone thinks about what he says, and he knows that people won't agree with it, but it's the only way. Cast light on the darkness, and um, that's the only way people can come to the light is to um, you know, expose them to the truth and that's what I try to do here Job 24 15 the eye of the adulterer waits for the twilight saying no eye will see me and he disguises his face well that doesn't help because God sees everything and is everywhere Proverbs 6 32 the one who commits adultery with a woman is lacking sense he who would destroy himself does it Leviticus 18.20, you shall not have intercourse with your neighbor's wife to be defiled with her. Deuteronomy 22.22, if a man is found lying with a married woman, then both of them shall die. Man who lay with the woman and the woman. Thus you shall purge the evil from Israel. Leviticus 20 verse 1, if there is a man who commits adultery with another man's wife, one who commits adultery with his friend's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. Um, Deuteronomy 22, 23 through 25. If there is a girl who is a virgin engaged to a man, and another man finds her in the city and lies with her, then you shall bring them both out to the gate of the city, and you shall stone them to death. The girl, because she did not cry out in the city, 
and the man because he has violated his neighbor's wife. Thus you shall purge the evil from among you. But if in the fields the man finds a girl who is engaged and the man forces her and lies with her, then only the man who lies with her shall die. And you can bet they didn't waste any time. Proverbs 30, verse 18 through 20. There are three things which are too wonderful for me, four which I do not understand. The way of an eagle in the sky, the way of a serpent on a rock, the way of a ship in the middle of the sea, and the way of a man with a maid or young woman. This is the way of an adulterous woman. She eats and wipes her mouth and says, I have done no wrong. You know, uh, anything outside of God's word for sex and for marriage, we can say, I haven't done anything wrong. It feels good or it made sense or whatever, but it, it's still wrong. And Exodus 20, 14 just cuts right to the chase. You shall not commit adultery. And the, the source there is, uh, I will give it there, bible.knowingjesus.com, topics adultery. Another comment from this article, I told you this is going to be a lengthy one. Couples are starting to walk down the aisle, tie the knot, insert cliche of your choice, in elaborate yet oddly conventional wedding ceremonies, and they may even share a kiss on the altar to seal the deal, but that's it. They never touch intimately again. Interesting use of words there, seal the deal. Traditionally, that means to have sexual relations to consummate the marriage. Now, I should add that if two people are not physically capable of having sex, they're still considered married. And merely fornicating with someone does not make you married, but you already have a, a problem to deal with. They also say in this article, take New York best friends Jay Guercio and Crystal Purificato. They both jumped into plus-size wedding dresses in November last year, slipped rings on each other's chubby fingers, and shared their first and only kiss. Bish bosh, Mary! Crystal is changing her surname to Guercio. Personally, they say, I think that's a wrong choice. Purific Purificado is a way cooler name and easier to pronounce. It may be true. It says here they sleep in the same bed, but are never sexually intimate with each other. They can, though, have sex, just not with each other. One of them says, I want her to continue to be my best friend and my life partner. 23-year-old Ms. Grisio told the New York Times, we wanted the world to know we are each other's go-to person in the world and be able to handle legal matters with the other appropriately. We are a couple, a unit, and partners for life. Well, that may be true, but they're not married. While it is nice to be concerned about handling legal matters appropriately, the so-called marriage or platonic marriage will never get approval from God. He's the one that instituted it. It's his idea. God himself, in the person of Jesus Christ, came to this world to get a bride. But he had to perfect her to be able to spend eternity with him in heaven. He has to do the unimaginable and pay for her sins. And he, only he could do it because he was sinless from eternity past and while on this very earth for some 30 years. He did this for the purpose of dying to pay or atone for our sins. This is the only way any of us will have absolution from all of our millions of sins. If you know you're hurting yourself with any of these aberrant type of relationships, by all means, let God forgive you and show you the way. You were not born for the abuse of these unnatural relationships. I also take exception to this comment from the article. It says, um, fair enough, it, if it makes you happy, dears, but oh God, just listen to this family therapist bloke from California. They say it should be acknowledged this is the therapist. It should be acknowledged that we've really normalized heterosexual, monogamous, romantic relationships to the point of stigmatizing other kinds of relationships. Nick Bogner told the New York Times, all of this is to say, I think this probably happens a lot, but people don't talk about it much because their relationships are invalidated by others when they've seen, they're seen as not being part of the norm. This video is about sexless or platonic marriage. That is to say, by, you know, by choice. I won't, vote, I won't vote for that. I think anytime what you are doing is outside of the norm of the Bible, you should ask yourself if there is a reason why. Normal is normal for a reason. Abnormal is abnormal for a reason. 
heterosexual monogamous relationships capped by the very best kind marriage provides the very best results when the man and woman truly love each other and understand that means total commitment other aberrations to marriage are stigmatized for a good reason they aren't normal beyond that i am concerned for what is right in what is best the bible warns us to avoid anything outside of marriage sexually it's really pretty simple get married stay married please each other physically to avoid sexual sin try to have children at least one be a blessing to each other marriage is a picture of christ in the church that is a huge truth that cannot be duplicated in any other type of romantic relationship god invented marriage he invented man and women and immediately before the day was up uh, he put them together as husband and wife. It's always been his plan. That is the norm. That is the only way to do it. That is my opinion based on the Bible. The Bible contains no error and is a perfect document without contradictions. Only the unlearned find these so-called contradictions. Here are some examples of aberrant relationships I've been alluding to. I mention these because they, you know, like they're like the bizarre idea of platonic marriage and plenty of others that will end in catastrophe they are polyamorous that's the fact or practice of being romantically or sexually involved with more than one person with the knowledge and consent of all parties there's cohabitation which is two people living together as if married but they're not married platonic parenting in marriage same-sex marriage polygamy having uh, multiple spouses polyandry that's a wife with more than one husband and polygyny which is a husband with more than one wife what can a person duped into thinking these are good things expect eventually cheating jealousy confusion and heartache why is there a movement to delegitimize marriage and invent something supposedly better or even on par which it isn't it could be because some people don't like having god tell them what to do could be that they think they're actually smarter than God himself. It may be that they're very easily led astray because they are foolish. Maybe they have no confidence they can stay married or no one can stay married to them. They don't trust any women anymore. Maybe they consider them all the same, have no interest in getting divorced again. Getting married is not without some risk. You know, what is? There is a way to treat each other, and that should lead to a lifelong marriage. I have many videos about many subjects on love beyond the sea and uh, I am married again by the way we all don't know what God says is right or wrong unless we believe his word is truth and there's also a thing called a conscience that gets involved too now there's all there was also mentioned another article title when I read this it's called let's not talk about sex because the onslaught of porn and erotica has demystified it so much that it's lost its appeal well, that's a different article, but we do have to talk about it. That's why I'm talking about it. Sex is such a wonderful thing and has been corrupted by our sinfulness. I think sex is everything it's cracked up to be. I've had people tell me otherwise, and I don't know what they're talking about. It should never lose its appeal either. I talk about it because it matters. The quality of a sexual relationship is often indicative of the quality of the marriage. It's a barometer of how the rest or the whole marriage is doing do you want to know how to not corrupt and demystify it get married stay married render your render to your spouse what belongs to them what you do together is up to the two of you not married then get married struggling with porn find help for that i made six podcasts um, on casting beyond the sea you can subscribe to on podbean about the topic of pornography now another comment here platonic marriages are the way to go a new trend for the wokies that walk among us mostly upon water they add not sure why they add that if you think platonic marriage is the way to go you would be going the wrong way as i've tried to show from the beginning according to the bible a man was to marry a woman they are a perfect fit for each other then they make the comment these kinds of marriages of course have always happened talking about sexless marriage alliances between kings and clans families and all that and millions still enter arranged marriages with someone they barely even know marriage has not always been about love it has always been a kind of contract hmm well marriage should be about love absolutely ephesians 5 says husbands are to love their wives as christ loved the church to the point of giving themselves up for her 
in Titus 4 it says older women are teach the younger women to love their husbands. So women are to love their husbands. Husbands are to love their wives. On Love Beyond the Sea, I'm trying to do much the same thing for guys. That's why some of it makes people very uncomfortable. And some, you know, just uh, just laugh it off. I could care less if you have been, you know, contracted into a marriage. Love is still commanded. Can you love someone you don't love? Good video topic. Well, of course you can, and you would have to, because love is something you render, not so much what you feel. Another comment, they say, plus, I know plenty of people who married someone from another country so they could get a visa. They never had sex together, either. Hmm. Well, there you go. That's one that uh, I hadn't mentioned, hadn't thought of. Someone getting a visa for unbiblical reasons. Or I think the government would also consider that an unvalid and unlawful marriage. Some might even try to interject an age gap marriage between a man and a woman, often from different countries. And while that may be unusual, that it's often cultural and has been around for a very long time. That has always been desirable for men especially. And I won't go into that here because I have in many prior videos. But if the two are faithful to each other, they have a normal marital life doing normal things, it is legal, and they pledge to love and serve each other until death do they part, they are married, that's a good thing. So I will pass on sexless marriage, thank you. I found love beyond the sea.